Hello everyone, this is Kaveh with lesson 9 of our Common Lisp lessons. Coming to you from Honolulu, as always. So, um, before we start with the lesson, let's have a few words about Common Lisp in general. And I wanted to make a remark about the stability of the language. And um, Common Lisp was standardized in the um, late, I think, 80s. Can't remember the exact date. I don't know because it went through a several-year-long standardization process. And I think it started around in the early '80s and probably finished around the mid '80s. But um, it's been a very stable language in the sense that the standard has not changed since then, and that's a good thing. Um, in most languages, that would be a bad thing because that means the language is out of date. So you know, C and C++ and Java and JavaScript have to constantly be updating their standards, which breaks all codes, confuses things. But the reason that um, Common Lisp doesn't have that problem, in my mind, is because of the way it was designed and the extensibility that was built in through macros and other features. It means that basically you can add any features you want to the language without having to modify the core of the language or modify the language standard. We've mentioned this before, that basically through the use of macros, you can add new things such as in, you know, series, hash maps, iterators, and so on that are not in the core standard language, but can modify, can enhance the syntax of the language and add new syntax to it without having to modify the base language. And this is kind of a big win in my mind. All right, so enough proselyzing. And we're gonna talk about renderers today. A renderer in computer graphics is the piece of code that takes the geometry information and creates an image out of it. So, it's what basically takes vector information, which is typically geometry, and outputs raster information, which is the final image that you see on the screen. And we're going to do a very simple version of renderers here for our little graphics application. So let's run, jump right into it. We define a few utility uh, functions or methods for our points. Subtracting two points, very straightforward. Jittering the point by a certain amount, displacing the point slightly, basically. We've already seen how about jitterating points um, of, uh, pardon me, of shapes and transforms and scales and so on. But we're just making this function here. Return the midpoint of two points and return the center of a list of points. So here we use some higher order functions that basically, um, you know, use the reduce function to reduce the plus operation over the list of points, and then multiply that by the denominator, which is the divided by the number of points. It gives us the center, i.e. average of all the points. So we define a class called renderer. And by default, it's an abstract superclass. It doesn't do anything. But we do define some methods for it. So we're using multiple dispatch here on shapes and renders. And for a basic shape, there's nothing to render. There's no geometry. So we just issue a warning. So this is the built-in common list warn, warn function that just issues a warning. We could do nothing. We could just fail silently and say, okay, this thing is not going to get rendered. But I'd rather have a warning in case somebody has accidentally forgotten to define a render, draw with renderer method for their shape and they're wondering why it's nothing showing up. This can be helpful. So the basic structure of this is the same as it is for the regular draw method for shapes before and after. But I'm redefining it here with the renderer as a second dispatch argument in case later we want to do anything particular based on the renderer, we might want to do something different with the transforms, for example. But for now, it's basically just pushing the matrix and then calling the OpenGL translate, rotate, and scale as before. And the after method does a cleanup by popping the matrix. And draw with renderer group, again, simply goes to its children and calls draw with renderer of the child and the renderer that we pass it. So this is almost like a little parallel pipeline in addition in, in um, 
parallel to the draw method. Draw methods. This is a draw with renderer methods. It does the same thing so far. Now we add some features to our scene. We add this renderer slot, which basically is nil by default. There is no renderer, and we define. Let's compile that. And then we define a draw with renderer method for the scene, which simply goes through all the shapes of the scene and calls draw with renderer. So this actually probably could have been up here with these guys, but I put it afterwards because I wanted to make sure that we had defined the renderer field before. So then we overwrite the draw method for the scene or redefine it. Let's compile that. So if it does have a renderer, it calls draw with renderer. And if it doesn't, it just does the usual draw of the shapes, it calls the basic draw function. Now, we take our rendering functions and break them up into two parts. One to do the polygon filling, one to do the polygon outline. So this is similar, this is basically, we took, we take the existing code that we had for drawing polygon, polygon shapes and we extract it out, take a list of points and a color, and this just fills an OpenGL polygon with that color. And then draw polygon outline simply takes a list of points, a color, an optional line width, and then creates an outline polygon for that color, with that color. And we're gonna be base building our different renderers on top of these functions. So the first renderer we're going to basically develop, I'm calling the drafting renderer because it kind of, to me, it looks like architectural drawings. So you'll see what it does in a second. And it's subclass of renderer and it takes an overshoot, a line width, and a stipple uh, slot. And what these do is basically the overshoot will draw the edges to go beyond the vertex of the polygon and overshoot it. Line width is a parameter of how thick the line should be. And stipple is a pattern which is either dotted or dashed. OpenGL provides a large number of patterns for doing this sort of thing. I'm just using these two for now, dotted and dashed for illustration purposes. So we need a helper function here because when we're drawing the outline now, we're not drawing one polygon. We're drawing a series of lines that don't meet up at the vertices, they overshoot. So this takes a list of points, which is pairwise points that it draws lines between a color, the line width, and the stipple pattern, which is nil, which basically means just use a solid stipple. Sets the color, sets the line width. If the stipple pattern is set, it calls the OpenGL flag for enabling stippling. And then if it's a dotted or dashed stipple, it you know calls the appropriate stipple uh, code for OpenGL. And this is stuff that's in the OpenGL reference documentation. You can look it up and you'll see what the various numbers mean. I'm not really gonna get into that. And then instead of calling one polygon, it calls a series of lines. So between every pair of points, it draws lines and you'll see that these lines basically with the overshoot function they will uh, create something that looks like an architectural drawing and when we're done if the stipple had been turned off we disable it so future rendering doesn't do any stippling so we need one more helper method which is extend polygon sides so what extend polygon sides does is basically take some an overshoot value and a list of points. And it loops through the points by pairs. We append the points to the first point. So it goes at the end. So basically it's a wrapped list of points. We wrap by the quitter, we, sorry, traverse by the quitter. And while the second point is not null, we continue. So this is kind of a slightly elaborate use of the loop method, loop macro, excuse me. And then what we do is basically we compute the two new points that are 
that basically have an, a direction and we subtract the direction from the first point, add it to the second point, so it creates an overshoot. You'll see in a moment what this does. And then we return the list of new points. So we now then define finally our draw with renderer method for a polygon shape for this drafting renderer. And it does two things. It fills the polygon like you do normally. That part really hasn't changed at all. But when we draw the polygon outline segments, it extends the polygon segments and then call, it passes that to the draw polygon outline segments. So this has been a lot of code review and might be getting a little bit boring. Let's start looking at some graphics. So if we def define our regular old um, square and we have set the shape color, using the shape color, we set the outline part to be yellow and the fill part to be blue. Now, if we set the renderer for the scene to be a make instance of a new drafting renderer with an overshoot value of 0.1, you'll see that each edge now overshoots by 0.1 units, kind of like a drafting or architectural drawing might be. We can modify the overshoot, make it larger. We can make the lines thicker by changing the line width. And then we can use the stipple patterns. For example, if we set a stipple to be dotted, we get this. A dashed stipple looks like this. And as I mentioned, OpenGL has a lot of different patterns, alternating dots and dashes and things of that sort that you can look up in documentation if you want to learn more about that. And if we set it to stipple of nil, it just goes back to um, a solid line. And if the renderer for the scene is set to nil, then it just goes back to does the basic draw, not draw with renderer, uses that pipeline. So it's a different rendering pipeline, basically. And it's kind of nice architecturally to keep your rendering pipeline separate so you don't start affecting each other as you add features to one. So let's do some more tests here. So this is basically our um, make random squares function that we used before. And if we now go through here, and we apply some of these things to it. For example, we go back and create the drafting renderer for the scene. So everything overshoots, everything overshoots more. We have very thick lines, dotted lines, dashed lines. solid lines and back to zero and back to the regular renderer. So the thing to realize here is that the renderer, by default, our regular OpenGL renderer just draws exactly with the geometry that you give it. But a renderer has the ability and the capability and the opportunity to modify the geometric information interpreted in different ways and do th more interesting things to it than just draw the exact geometry as is. So people do artistic renderers that give painterly effects and that sort of thing, impressionistic renderers and, and so forth. Um, so this drafting renderer was sort of our first example of it. We'll do one more example today in today's lesson. We're going to define something called a squiggly renderer. And what a squiggly renderer does is basically breaks up the, all the edges into slightly squiggly lines, or very squiggly lines, depending on the parameters you give it, and then draws them that way. So the squiggly renderer takes a number of iterations and a displacement value and does sort of a um, recursive subdivision of the edges. You'll see that in a second. Now, a little side note about um, convex and non-convex polygons. So a convex polygon is one which basically has no, um, the, the curvature is always outwards like a circle and doesn't have any cutouts and things of that sort. And when you call an OpenGL polygon, it expects it to be that way for efficiency purposes. If you have polygons that are non-convex, have concavities in them, then you have to handle that yourself in your renderer, in your code. And that's what we're doing here because we're going to end up with polygons that are not concave or not convex. We do a kind of a 
simple heuristic, which usually works, but it's not foolproof, and we don't we don't really worry about it too much. So, in addition to regular polygon, OpenGL has a triangle fan mode, which basically creates a series of triangles from the data. The first vertex you give it is going to be the center of your polygon, and you call that with GL vertex. And then you loop through all the points, and pairwise it'll create triangles for those points from the center to the to the periphery of your polygon shape. And then we go back and call it, we loop it over the first point again, so we close the, 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 the loop for the polygon. So for, in most cases, you won't even notice this is there because it um, saves us from getting some open shield artifacts when we're trying to draw a concave polygon with um, straightforward OpenGL polygon calls. So we define a method called do squiggle, and this is the heart of our renderer here, where it takes number of iterations, a displacement, and a number of points. And it basically loops through, if, if, if iterations is zero, it, you know, it just returns the points. Otherwise, it recursively calls do squiggle with one minus iterations, and the displacement is halved. So we loop through the points again, and basically we just just to keep it simple, I'll just zip over this, and if anybody wants to study it in more detail, they can do that. But it just jitters the midpoint of each edge between pairs of points, and then pushes that onto a new list of points that gets passed down and eventually returned. So our draw with renderer method then, for the squiggly renderer, takes the points of the shape and does a do squiggle on them, and we get a new set of points for the shape. And those are the new set of points that we pass down to the fill triangle fan and draw polygon outline. So what this renderer does it basically takes the points of a polygon or points of a shape, a polygon shape, and it creates a new list of points and passes that to the regular routines, um, not the regular routines, the special routines, fill triangle fan, and then the regular polygon outline. So if we want to test that, we'll get our regular little square back. And then now we make an instance of squiggly renderer assigned that to the scene with one iteration and a displacement of 0.1. So you can see that basically it's created points at the midpoints of the edges and then displaced them slightly so they're no longer at the midpoints. They moved in x and y in each case. So if we do the same thing here, but we do two subdivisions, we get a squigglier line three subdivisions. So for example, this polygon, the blue, would extend out here if we're not doing a triangle fan. If we're trying to draw a regular polygon and gave, just gave it all these points to the OpenGL polygon function, then these concavities here would not work correctly. So this is because we're doing a triangle fan and we're actually drawing polygons like this as triangles that this is working. And this can mess up if the points move too much and overlap and so on, but for our purposes, it'll do. And then four points. And if we make the displacement smaller, it gives you slight variation. So if I just keep reapplying this, we just get variations of it. And if I set the render to be nil, we're back to our basic draw function and our drawing pipeline. So let's take our um, old friend, the nested hexagons, and put a squiggly renderer onto this scene. So you can see that they've slightly squiggled, and it looks a little bit more like perhaps a pen drawing or a hand drawing or something like that. So if we make more squiggles with larger values, I just keep replying that you can see it's giving us interesting shapes. 
And if we put the renderer back to nil, we're back to our usual drawing pipeline. All right, so that was a little bit of a confused and a rushed overview of rendering and some of 2D rendering um, renderers that we can create by taking the basic geometric information and somehow processing it and then calling OpenGL through the rendering with that new process information. And that can give some visually interesting results. And we'll play with another one of these in the next lesson, which will basically be renderers part two. All right, thank you.